Oh, good evening, everyone. Sego ani abuju endio wachea kwe kwe. As the mayor of the city of Kingston, I offer these words in the spirit of this gathering. Let us bring our good minds and hearts together as one to honor and celebrate these traditional lands as a gathering place of the original peoples and their ancestors who are entrusted to care for Mother Earth since time immemorial. It is with deep humility that we acknowledge and offer our gratitude for their contributions to this community, having respect for all as we share this space now and walk side by side into the future. So we were just meeting in a Committee of the Whole closed meeting. We discussed a number of items related to updates to the CAO performance review process, increasing the supply of employment lands, uh, housing accelerator initiative, and confidential motion. So I will ask for a motion to uh, waive our procedural rules, to rise with reporting, uh, and then to reconvene after our open session back into Committee of the Whole closed meeting. Uh, moved by Councillor Emma, seconded by Councillor Hassan. The Council rise from the Committee of the Whole closed meeting that the rules of bylaw number 2021-41 be waived, that the City Clerk report, and that Council reconvene into Committee of the Whole closed meeting prior to bylaws in order to complete the closed agenda. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay. Uh, Councillor Osterhoff, you are excused for this first vote reporting out. Moved by Councillor Stephen, seconded by Councillor Glenn. The mayor and the clerk be authorized to execute an agreement of purchase and sale and all other necessary agreements and documents as may be required for the city to repurchase the property municipally known as 143 Resource Road in a form satisfactory to the Director of Legal Services. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Councillor Osterhoff, you can return. Uh, moved by Councillor Boehm, seconded by Councillor Tozo. That Council approves the sale of 33 Compton Street and authorizes the Mayor and Clerk to enter, <coughs> excuse me, to execute all necessary agreements as may be required to effect the transfer of the title of 33 Compton Street to the satisfaction of the Director of Legal Services and that the net proceeds of sale be transferred to the Housing and Homelessness Reserve to be used for the creation of new affordable housing units. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay. Uh, moving on to the approval of the adits, we have a motion of uh, recognition. We have the addition of a report from the Environment, Infrastructure, and Transportation Policies Committee, and we have a second new motion. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the adits, please? Moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Amos. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, are there any disclosures of potential pecuniary interest? Councillor Ostroff. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I, Gary Ostrap of the Council of the Whole, sorry, <laughs> Clause 6, uh, Report Number 24087, uh, for the reason I, uh, as I am a, have a professional relationship with the uh, Central Party in Focus. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, I, Ryan Bowen, of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of Clause 1, Report Number 25, as an employee of Utilities Kingston. It may be perceived that I have a conflict with Report 25, Clause 1, insofar as it relates to Utilities Kingston. That has been duly submitted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Seeing no other declarations, then we'll move on. We have no presentations this evening, uh, so we'll move on to delegations. We have one delegation. Uh, at this point, we'll invite Megan Knott, Chief Executive Officer of Tourism Kingston, and Ted Robinson, Business Events Specialist from Tourism Kingston, and Krista LeClaire, Executive Director of Kingston Accommodation Partners, to appear before Council to speak to Clause 3, Report Number 25 from the CAO, with respect to the Conference Centre update and next steps. Uh, so folks, I believe I can see you all on Zoom, so I will pass the floor over to you. Thanks, Mayor Patterson, members of Council and staff. Um, next slide, please. So I'm here with um, partners tonight just to uh, speak in support and to reiterate um, some important pieces as it relates to the Conference Centre. So business events in Kingston, we've uh, obviously talked to many uh, partners and members of council about the Conference Centre and its importance as related to the tourism sector in Kingston, but a few things I'd like to highlight tonight. Number one, it's certainly a priority of tourism. I know there are a lot of competing priorities within our community, but um, those within tourism and specific to this conference center, it's absolutely a focus, a focus of the integrated destination strategy, as we've highlighted uh, multiple times, as well as a board strategy. It's tied into, obviously, a council strategic priority, 
And we know that this particular uh, conference center, this particular report, and the future of this report end result will offer year-round economic impact, citywide job creation. And as uh, we continue to have these conversations, I just wanted to remind Council that certainly uh, we're in we're in support, obviously, of this project, and through the Development Fund Committee, we continue to offer support as this project evolves. Next slide, please. Head over to you. Um, yes, good evening, Mayor Patterson and Council Members. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, we've spoken at length uh, in the past in, in various reports about um, significant lost business uh, without having appropriate facilities in the city. Um, and even in the last few months, I have calculated that there are nine events that we haven't been able to bid on that would have represented about six and a half million dollars in direct spending in the community. Um, and this evening, I just wanted to highlight three groups in particular that would have an outsized impact if we had this facility. These are all um, business events industry groups. Um, the first one is the Canadian Society of Association Executives. Uh, they have a national uh, conference, which we simply can't bid on based on the number of participants who would who would attend this type of meeting. These are all people who, um, in their day-to-day -day work, plan their own meetings and conferences on an annual basis. Um, the second group uh, is the Professional Convention Management Association, similar um, in, in that they operate uh, as professionals in the business events industry. They also host a national conference, as does the um, Meeting Planners International group in Canada. Um, they are about to embark on a national conference this year called The Event, uh, and these are three key groups uh, whose conferences we simply cannot, uh, we cannot bid on at this time because we don't have the infrastructure that they require, and all of them would be people who would be, be interested in hosting in Kingston if we had that, that infrastructure in place. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. So I'll dive into the numbers a little bit here, but first I want to mention that um, this, this sector as a whole is um, recovering. It's certainly one of the latest to recover, but I think that that bodes well for us because it positions us at an opportunity for growth. Um, there's plenty of potential lost business, as Ted uh, mentioned, um, you know, events that we absolutely could not host if we don't have a larger space. And then an opportunity to rebound in a, in a time with a competitive product um, that would meet consumer needs as they're, you know, getting back to um, business events. Some of the numbers on the right I want to highlight. So um, we're comparing 2019 in tourism. That's the year we go back to right now. Um, and, you know, you can see from 2019 to 2023, we are getting there. So we're not quite there, but soon we will be. Um, and same with business spend. So again, we're, we're not quite there, but the gap is, is closing in. Uh, next slide, please. This slide here uh, looks at Canada as a whole, but I think it's still really relevant because a couple key numbers. So business travelers actually spend upwards to seven times more than leisure travelers. So I think that's really key. Megan mentioned that they come um, all seasons and, and certainly through the off season, but also business travelers come during the week when often um, our businesses are, are needing that business. So I think um, that's a really key number there that they're coming at the time that we need them and then they're also spending more. And then the number on the right, 40%, of all tourism dollars in Canada are tied to business events. That is a huge number. These numbers come from, um, they're backed up through different sources, but they're presented through Meetings Mean Business Canada. Um, certainly business events are a catalyst for collaboration, investment, trade, um, critical source of business income. So again, supporting um, businesses across the city, uh, high value jobs, tax revenue, um, and so on. So 30 seconds. Thank you. Another couple numbers here, about $47 billion in direct economic spend, a large, uh, like $27 billion in direct GDP, um, over 200,000 jobs directly tied, and again, that number, over $900 per visitor that are traveling on business. Uh, next slide, please. So this really sums up our presentation. Um, we're really here to support the staff report um, to go, you know, from the RFI process into the RFP process. So we hope that uh, we gain your support. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. So with that, uh, we will uh, look to Council. Are there any questions for the delegation? Okay. Uh, seeing no questions, thank you all very much.
Uh, and with that, we will continue in our agenda. We have no further delegations. We have no briefings. There is one petition to present, a petition bearing approximately 160 signatures requesting the city of Kingston express solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza was submitted to the clerk's department on February 12th, 2024. Are there any other petitions to present? Okay, if none, we will continue. We have several um, special motions this evening. So first moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen, that sincere congratulations of Kingston City Council be extended to Michael Harris, former executive director at Keys, who is welcoming retirement after a 40 plus year career with the organization. As a dedicated leader, Michael has spearheaded important projects and supported the growth of an organization that in his own words, went from a youth employment center to a large dynamic multi-service organization. Michael's integrity, compassion, and knowledge have been invaluable to Kingston and played a key role in the youth and newcomer members of our community. Congratulations, Michael, and thank you for your immense contributions to our city. Moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen. The sincere congratulations of Kingston City Council be extended to Michael Bell, former Kingston Community Health Center Chief Executive Officer, who has accepted a new position as the CEO of Lennox and Addington County General Hospital. As an exemplary leader, Mike has propelled the organization forward through numerous innovative and transformative initiatives. During his tenure, KCHC experienced remarkable growth, successfully completed two accreditation processes, and played a pivotal role in shaping the Frontenac, Lennox, and Addington Ontario Health Team. Congratulations, Mike, and thank you for your ongoing efforts towards the well-being of the Kingston region. Moved by Councillor Shave, seconded by Councillor McLaren, that the sincere condolences of Kingston City Council be extended to the family and friends of the late Don Bristol, who passed away on January 29, 2024. Don served nine years on Kingston City Council, representing Cataraqua Ward from 1988 to 1997, and he was a strong advocate for his district. Our thoughts are with his family during this time. And finally, moved by Councillor Ridge, seconded by Mayor Patterson, that Kingston City Council recognize Ms. Annette Bergeron, who has been named the new honorary commander of the Fort Henry Guard by the Fort Henry Guard Club of Canada and the St. Lawrence Parks Commission. Ms. Bergeron is a recognized national leader in the field of engineering and has demonstrated an admirable commitment to public service through leadership in the highest offices in her profession. Ms. Bergeron succeeds Major General Lewis McKenzie, who held the position since 2021. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, uh, we have no deferred motions, so we will move on to reports. Uh, first up, we have report number 24 from the CAO. Moved by Councillor Shea, seconded by Councillor Chinani, that report number 24 from the Chief Administrative Officer consent be received and adopted. Okay, there are four clauses. Would anyone like any of the clauses separated? Councillor Toso? Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like uh, clause one separated. Okay, clause one. If there are no other separations, first we will um, deal with the remaining items and then we will circle back to clause one. So clause two is service level agreement between the city of Kingston and sustainable Kingston Corporation. Clause three, request for delegated authority, no noise bylaw. Clause four, changes to committee of adjustment, membership composition and honorarium for non-council members. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, so back to clause one. Renewal of the service level agreement between the City of Kingston and the Na Kingston Native Centre and Languages Nest, formerly the Kingston Indigenous Languages Nest. Councillor Tozel. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, I did a tour of this with a bunch of other councillors and the work that they were doing there was absolutely impressive. But one thing they impressed upon us was the challenge they had with space for services. Has there been any discussions with the city with regards to working with uh, the uh, Native uh, Centre and Language Nest with uh, additional space and capacity for that building? Because the services that they're providing, I think we were all quite impressed. Mr. Gibbs. Uh, thank you and through you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, yes, I met with the executive director of the Kingston Native Center and Languages NAS to talk about uh, alternative space arrangements, and we are working with uh, the director of real estate to find alternative space, expanded space that may suit their needs. Thank you. And they're doing great work there. I know they're losing their executive director, and thank you for staff's continued work with this uh, great part of the community. Okay, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, on to report number 25 from the CAO. Moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor McLaren, that report number 25 from the Chief Administrative Officer recommend be received and adopted clause by clause. Okay, the first clause, 2023 Water System Annual Summary Reports and 2023 Wastewater Annual Reports. 
All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Count, question, Councillor Chaves? Go ahead. Yes, please. Um, this probably have asked this before, but are we doing everything in our uh, ability to make sure that the clean water that we supply to our residents is actually clean and safe? Ms. Roberts? Through you, Your Worship, yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Amos. Uh, thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. I will just continue where um, Councillor Shades left off. On page six of nine of the report, there were three secondary bypass events in 2023. Uh, were there, do we have an assessment of the environmental damage this may have caused? Through you, Your Worship, um, no. Will we, is there a way to follow up or do any sort of assessment? Through you, Your Worship. Um, the release of sewage is diluted sewage, and, I, and I'm not gonna downplay the impacts to the environment on, of that, um, but currently no utilities, Kingston it's in its capacity as the operating authority to manage, operate, and maintain those systems. We don't, we don't do any follow-up studies to the natural environment themselves, so we don't go out and do any kind of sampling of the lake. What we do do is sampling of all the processes in the material that is moving through the plant as well as the final effluent that's released. So we know what the quality is of that final effluent, but when we do have a bypass of diluted sewage, we're not going out and doing any follow-up sampling on the environment. Is that something that Utilities Kingston could look at in the future as a due diligence me measure? Through your worship, um, there are a number of reports on the quality of Lake Ontario through the Great Lakes um, initiative. And so there is some follow-up that we could do on, on that to identify it. It doesn't mean though that that information is gonna be relevant to just Kingston. There's a number of communities that, um, that discharge their final effluent into, into those natural environments as well. Um, but certainly there's a number of, of studies about the quality of lakes and what some of the impacts are because of the pressure from wastewater systems. Thank you. On page seven of nine of your report, you indicate that um, you received no action or directives from the ministry on the one non-compliance condition that was reported. Is there anything of concern or nature that council should be aware of? Through your worship, I apologize. I just need a little bit more clarification on the question. So on page seven of nine, under the Canada or Canna wastewater treatment plant, first paragraph, uh, it indicates there is a one non-compliance condition that was reported. Uh, it also indicates that the ministry gave no direction or uh, actions that were required. Is that because it was, it was a minor variance of some kind? Through your worship. That's correct, it was a, a one-time non-compliance. We would have reported that to the Ministry of the Environment, um, Conservation and Parks. They had no directives for us to follow up. If there had been subsequent non-compliances, it's possible that they would have followed up. So I would consider it um, a variant. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will call the vote on Clause 1. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Uh, clause 2, update partnership opportunities École secondaire publique Mille-Île et École secondaire catholique Sainte-Marie-Rivier. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Oh, Councillor Chenani, you wanted to speak to it? Okay. Okay, uh, Clause 3, conference centre update and next steps. Councillor Chenani. So I have an amendment. Uh, okay, uh, so Councillor Tanani is putting forward an amendment to, or sorry, a motion to amend Clause 3, Report Number 25, uh, moved by Councillor Tanani, seconded by Mayor Patterson, that uh, Clause 3, Report Number 25 from the CAO be amended by deleting the following words by existing capital budgets in the second recommendation clause and replace with the words 50-50 by existing municipal capital budgets and the municipal accommodation tax development fund and rate as follows. 
The Council authorized the issuance of an honorarium of $50,000 to each of the pre-qualified proponents to submit a complete submission through the request for a proposal process to be funded 50-50 by existing municipal capital budgets and the Municipal Accommodation Tax Development Fund. Uh, Councillor Chinani, you have the floor. So, yeah, I was part of um, a TK Development Fund um, process, So, and we already discussed about Tourism Kingston using funds to help um, make realize this happen. So, um, with that, is just making sure they can maximize, maximize the highest potential outcome uh, that we can get for this possible build. Um, you know, there is quite the requirement uh, that we're asking to be included in this. So, we need to make sure that we get the most high quality proposal possible. So, once the proposal is picked, this is something that once it is built, this is something that's going to serve a community from here on in, and it's going to be in our community for forever. So, and that's why we need to make sure that we get the best possible proposal. Um, just really want to make sure that this this is really important uh, to me, and, and I think um, getting the best product is and the best um, the greatest potential on the return um, would mean that we need to like invest in this to make sure that we get the best, the most like um, tax revenue possible um, for this. So um, I'll open it. Questions and anything. Okay, thank you. So, um, so right now we're doing debate on the motion to amend only. So the motion to amend is the insertion of the clause that would ensure these honorariums are, are split 50-50 between city capital budget and municipal accommodation tax. Just want to make sure everyone's clear on what we're debating. Any discussion on the amendment only? We will come back to the main item later. Councillor Sand, go ahead. Thank you, at just one point, oh, I just have one question. <laughs> so for the 85,000 for the consultant, is that also 50-50? No, so the city, would pay for the consultants. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Stephen. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Um, I think it's fundamentally fair to pay people for the work they do. So the fact that we are asking these businesses to spend, I think staff said it was, I'm just looking for a nod, 150 to $200,000 probably to prepare something of this magnitude for us. Uh, we've already pre-screened six. And I think that if we're able to get six, potentially six back without having to pay the whole thing, I think that that's excellent. I support this fully. I think it's a really great compromise. Um, and I really appreciate that Tourism Kingston's willing to, to work with us. I mean, they're always a great partner, but um, I, I fully support this. Councilor Rostov. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I just, I appreciate the comments and I, I think it's a, a reasonable amendment. I just wanted to make sure, is this something that was done in collaboration with Tourism Kingston? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be pretty underhanded if we just kind of threw that amendment down and didn't consult with them first. We better so, be sure. <laughs> so, yes, I, Thank you. I, I can confirm that, uh, that there was, was an agreement and support from Tourism Kingston. I, th I think uh, Ms. Nod is, is nodding her head as well. Uh, any anybody else on the amendment? Uh, Councilor Shapes. Yes, um, I'm just going to say I'm not against the project in general. However, I do have concerns regarding some of the financial aspects of it. More specifically, the staff recommendation with the honorarium, uh, which is changing with this amendment. However, I still have the issues. I do understand that the normal business practice was also done during the pre-construction of the slush puppy place. However, I would argue that this like, this, like comparing apples to oranges in regard to the current slush puppy place, the city retained ownership of the building. Here, the city is not retaining ownership of this convention center. We are actually giving enough incentives to the winner of this project. First being foregoing the revenues from the lost parking spaces. The other be and the major one being the sale of the property to the successful pr proponent for $1. A property which is worth approximately eleven point nine million. So, Chase, is this speaking to the amendment or to the main the main clause? Because you will have mm -hmm. another chance to speak to the main clause. It's just to be fair, as chair, I'm just trying to direct the debate just to whether or not to bring in the fifty fifty from Tourism Kingston on the amendment. Well, that one as well. I, I'm not in support of the honorarium period. Correct. Fifty fifty or not. 
So why don't why you you can do those comments and then I'll come back to you once we get to the main motion one way or the other. Yes. The two? Okay. Anything else on this motion to amend? No. Okay. Anybody else on the motion to amend? Okay, so we'll call the vote then. All those in favor? Opposed? And that carries. So now we're back to the motion or the, the item as amended. Uh, Councillor Cheney, you still have the floor if there's anything else that you wanna wanna say. Um, no, I just thank you for the support for the amendment. Um, I think this is like an important um, thing for a community and um, I think that sharing the cost really kind of is like a middle ground of the cost to the city. And um, so I'm, I'm happy with that, so. Okay, Councillor Chase. Well, to finish off what I was saying, I don't think I need to repeat the whole thing. It was just a few seconds ago. Um, what I'm going to just say is that we, went, we just went through a second difficult budget deliberations just a few months ago, um, just last month, and certain we will go through another one next year. December is not the time to concern, be concerned about a budget deliberations, the time is now. I do believe $11.9 million is enough incentive to get good applications and project for, this, for the benefit of our residents. I would consider this cost of doing of doing business for any of the proponents. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else on the item as amended, Councillor Sanek? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just have a couple questions to staff. So through you, um, when we do the RFP, are we going to be asking for any um, affordable housing units? in the uh, condos or apartments that will be built on top of the convention center. Commissioner Acton. Uh, thank you and through you. <clears throat> I don't think that's something that we had explicitly um, thought about it from a staff perspective, but certainly could take that direction if council's looking for that to be part of the RFP criteria. Thank you. and. For when we receive the um, RFEOI submissions, we received six of them, and now we're going forward with all six for them to provide details. Was there any way to um, reduce the six to the top three or four? Because that would help to, um, <laughs> I don't know, uh, be less expensive for us to go forward right now. Like when they gave their submission, was it just that? were interested or did they give any details that we could then evaluate and try to reduce the six down to the top three or four to then go forward with the full RFP? Commissioner Agnew. Oh, thank you and through you, your worship. So all six submissions that were provided and evaluated by the staff team, they certainly were all complete. There were a number of requisite items that had to be provided as part of a complete submission. So each of those submissions did a good job of identifying and speaking to each of those elements in their actual uh, proposal response. The, the scoring was quite uh, comparable across all of them and they were all high quality submissions. So for that reason, we decided to put all six of them through to increase the, or to have the largest bidding pool possible. Certainly through the process, it's, it's very likely that not all six are going to proceed, but we wanted to ensure that we had a competitive process for round two. And, and for those reasons, we put all six through uh, based on the quality of those submissions. Thank you. All right, so none were eliminated then. Um, they All the six submissions are in front of us today. Um, I, okay, from what we've seen over the last um, year since this council started is that we don't have a lot of city-owned land. You know, like in Toronto, they always talk about, okay, we're going to start being a builder of some affordable housing because we have all this extra land. In Kingston, it's really not the case. We do own this parking lot, though, that, you know, is now going to be a convention center. Um, the housing crisis is just getting worse. The affordability crisis is getting worse. And I just think, you know, uh, like it's just getting worse. And as we go forward with this convention center, I think this piece of land is 
better to hang on to and to think of something that could have some affordable housing units and not a convention center. Um, it's really the only land we have other than, you know, start building on some parking lots like the England parking lot downtown to put some affordable housing on and um, I can't support this. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sun. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, I have a question for the staff. Um, can somebody explain what the tax, uh, taxation will be on that conference center after it's uh, completed uh, versus what we're getting from the parking lot now? Uh, Commissioner Agnew. Thank you, and through you. I don't know if... Um, Ms. Kennedy or Mr. Walker is on the line. I do have an email with some information. I'll just take me a second to pull it up. Oh, I see okay. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker, go ahead. Uh, through you, Your Worship, the taxation on the convention center itself would really depend upon the way it's constructed, whether it is a standalone structure or considered to be part of the hotel. As a standalone structure, I believe we had an estimate of about uh, $220,000 in taxes, including education, about $160,000 uh, with uh, just the municipal portion. As far as if it uh, was part of a hotel, then it becomes just included in the assessment of the hotel itself, which we, as a hotel alone, either with the convention center or without, we would estimating for 100 rooms at about $8 million. And then, of course, there is the other structures and land that's left over in the development that we would also be getting further tax from. So I think uh, at one point we had an estimate of about five hundred to 600000 in taxation expected, depending upon the way that the structures are all built. Sayo Hurdle. Thank you, and <clears> through you, Mr. Mayor. So I don't have an exact number, Councillor Son, but one thing I do want to remember, re remind Council of is that this project is going to be multi-use. So the conference center and the hotel are only a small portion of what the redevelopment is going to be. There's going to be residential. So I know that you know housing was mentioned earlier. So we expect there will be lots of housing on this property and those will also generate additional property taxes. Most likely will be other commercial um, activities as well and uh, tax accordingly on the property. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, uh, um, this is, we are a corporation and corporation always continue to invest and this is investment. Uh, I appreciate uh, comments from my colleagues for $11 million, but this is kind of investment. It's for investment for the future. It's the future for our children. And all the crisis the city is facing at this point, we need money to deal with that. The money have to come from somewhere. And only the places we have, the resources we have, we have to use those resources wisely to get those incentives and continue to fight with the current challenges, whether it's the housing, the environment, the infrastructures. So I think this is a great investment uh, for many points. Um, it's not only the taxation, but it will benefit to the local business, and local business will also pay the taxes, uh, which we are not including probably in these numbers, but, but I heard that. Um, I expect from all of you, please look into all the aspects when we have the project coming on the table. Just not only one, one um, side of uh, the negativity or just the one point you have in there. We have to think about our children our, um, and, and our city and the people who pay taxes who need and deserve the best services. To provide all those necessity and the services, we need the money. We don't have a mint press in Kingston so we can print the money. The money has to come so from somewhere and that is only the resource where to reinvest in, in, in such projects. So I have no problem to supporting this uh, uh, project and uh, I hope that my fellow councillor will support this one as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Ostroff. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Patterson. And um, I just wanna concur with my, my councillor Hassan and um, in support of this, this is uh, 
I think an important time for us to invest in our city and this is an opportunity that's been coming for a long time. We, we, this is kind of like the maturing of our city. We have a beautiful arena. We have it. To, it's the synergy that we want to continue when the arena was built in our downtown and it is about uh, um, uh, a, a business a synergy as well and it's going to, it's going to complement everything that is there. So I would encourage us to, uh, we heard tonight to support it. We heard tonight about the positive impact on the economy and and um, it's it's a, a like a tourism um, it's a tourism business cycle that we really want. So I, I really think that uh, this is something to support, and it will be a, a great development for us all and for for the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, and through you, um, just a quick question to staff: um, the honorarium that we're giving out. Can you confirm? Did we give an honorarium out for when the LVAC was uh, built? Uh, Commissioner Agnew? Uh, thank you, and through your worship. Yes, we did. Uh, staff went back and pulled out that report. I believe it was from 2005 or 2006, and it indicated an amount of about $150,000 for that project. So, and this is fairly standard industry practice for bids of this substantial nature, is that correct? Uh, thank you and through you. Certainly um, from, from my perspective of working in the industry for the last 15 years, yes, I've seen it certainly utilized in many public sector projects, hospital bids for example, where they're evaluating down to a couple of uh, design build options, um, sometimes in post-secondary. Certainly we were able to discuss a number of options that our consultant has also seen through their work in the industry across different cities of, of projects of a similar nature and the use of an honorarium when there's multiple bidders involved. Okay, my, my fear in all of this, um, one, I'm 100% in favor of this development. Um, my fear in all of this is that if we decide as a, as a group to shoot down this honorarium, that there's a potential for us to be blacklisted uh, on any large scale projects because we're not showing good f uh, faith in industry standards of what has been taking place for obviously a number of years. We know that um, the convention center is, is greatly needed. That's one check mark. It's producing a number of houses, another check mark. We've heard from a number of our businesses downtown that there is not enough parking. 169 parking spaces will be developed another check mark, and then obviously a hotel. And in, in my understanding, in, in talking to our accommodation partners, um, another hotel space is, is desperately needed in the downtown core, so another check mark. So we're hitting four major threshold marks uh, in moving forward with this industry uh, or this, this development uh, of this kind. So I'm in f full favor of this. It's going to create a lot of jobs. Uh, right from construction jobs straight through to when the convention center hotel are up and running. Um, I think this is a good move. This is another step in our downtowns, but specifically our core as a city growing in the right direction. Um, my only comment, and, and I've said this to staff or sent an email to staff, um, it would be nice if there were some design elements that were a little more uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye and not a giant blob of a concrete block. So, food for thought. Thanks. Next is Councillor Glenn. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I hear my colleagues' concerns about our housing situation. So my question is, why is there no minimum uh, number of residential units specified in the submissions? Uh, I, would, I would think that that would be an appropriate way to approach this. We're talking about a hotel room, um, a hotel with approximately 100 rooms, yet we just say residential, which we are leaving it rather vague. Uh, I would prefer if we could put some kind of a number on that to ensure that we're getting uh, at least a, a reasonable amount of residential units included in this. I think that that would make it more palatable for pretty much everyone here. Commissioner Agnew. Uh, thank you and through you. Certainly in putting together the document that went out for um, expressions of interest, the number that was indicated relative to an approximate number of hotel rooms, that came from some study that was done by the tourism industry. We haven't done a study specifically saying how many units we know 
Overall, as a city, we certainly have a very low vacancy rate. We do have a lot in the pipeline, but we do need to continue to build. So we don't have an exact number, but if council wanted to specify a number, that's something that we can include. I think relative to the first round and, and going into an RFP, we do want to provide as much flexibility to the prospective bidders as possible, because of course, a very important component of this that ties everything together into the reality of a project working is the business case analysis. So every, every little bit of um, rentable space becomes an important component of looking at the cash flow of how the project would work long term, paying back whatever the money is they needed to build to construct it. But certainly if council has a, a desire on that, um, we can include that within the RFP, but I don't have a specific recommendation to provide you tonight as, as part of this discussion. See your hurdle. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. So just to maybe build on that, one of the things that we could do is we could look at a, an average um, of a uh, number of units that we see per um, per acre, for example, in, in the downtown, in terms of units, um, and try to target that. I do wanna say to council that I think, no matter what the number is, we're probably gonna get a proposal that's gonna have more residential units than what we're identifying because that is how the project will be financially sustainable. So I think we can look on average at, um, in terms of our market, what we see, and we could put that uh, into basically the RFP so that way it's, it secures a certain number of units. Okay, that would certainly satisfy me if we could do that. Um, do you need an amendment in this to um, proceed or can we go ahead the way it is and I'll, I'll trust you to put that in the RFP. Commissioner Agnew. Uh, thank you through you certainly I don't feel that we need an amendment I can take that direction. Okay perfect that's uh, that's fine by me that satisfies uh, I think my major concern and perhaps that of a few of my other colleagues otherwise I think um, I'm very good with moving ahead with this to see what we could possibly do with this uh, piece of property. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Deputy Mayor Stephen. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Um, I really agree with what Councilor Amos says. I think that this project will check a lot of boxes. Um, and as far as the honorarium goes, we don't know how many of these businesses will actually come back with full proposals for us. So it's entirely possible it could be two and not six. Um, hopefully it's six, so we have a lot of choice. Um, to the the concerns about the, the housing and all of the other issues with that piece of land, um, I agree, but I think the fact that this project is going to be mixed land use is awesome. And this is in the downtown exactly where we wanna see this kind of build. As far as whether it's a big concrete blob um, or you know, we specify the number of housing units, I think one of the things I'd like to offer that I learned from teaching is that when you are giving sort of success criteria for any kind of project, you want to give them some guidance, you want to give them some parameters, but then you got to let them go and see what they come back with. Because I think that we're going to see a lot of, hopefully, really different designs. And then we get to have a really cool conversation about which one is best for Kingston. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor Tozo. Thank you for your worship through you. Um, I also want to highlight that I really like the proposal that it's mixed use, that we're talking a lot about a lot of boxes, as Councillor Amos said, I'm going to borrow this down the road, a lot of check marks there, um, that this can fulfill a lot of good use of land in our downtown. Um, I have sort of two objections to this. Uh, one is I still have to go back to my constituents tomorrow and say the city is giving $250,000 potentially to a successful development firm that might get an $11 million piece of land. I, that's a hard thing for me to sell to my uh, my constituents. So I find that a bit problematic here, although I am encouraged the fact that Tourism Kingston did kick in 50%. That's great. Um, the second is, is just um, the message that in the midst of a housing crisis and climate crisis, we're building a convention center. I, it doesn't sit well with me philosophically of the message that we're sending out. Um, I can tell by the conversation around the table how excited everybody is. I realize I'm in the minority here and I'm fine with that. Uh, but just on that, those two philosophical grounds, I'm gonna not vote for this. Uh, but thank you for the great work Steph has done on this report. Thank you. 
Uh, okay, anybody else? Deputy Mayor, would you take the chair? Mayor Patterson. Thank you. Um, great comments around the table. I appreciate Councillor Tozo's comment. The only thing that I would say is that we can do more than one thing at once. So we can do a convention center, a conference center, and a great mixed use development on this one parcel of city owned land. And we can also be very aggressive meeting housing targets, affordable housing, supportive housing, absolutely. So appreciate that comment, but um, to be clear, this is not an either or. Uh, this is a matter of when we have a strategic plan with 115 different initiatives, this is pushing forward one of those, but we're also gonna be able to push forward everything else as well. So I think it's a great opportunity. This is a very unique piece of land that has been talked about in this city for a very, very long time. And I am so anxious to see shovels in the ground and to be see something built finally next to Slush Puppy Place. I think it would be a great addition to the downtown. So looking forward to seeing what uh, amazing designs and proposals come forward from the proponents uh, later, later on. Thank you very much. Back to you. Okay. Uh, if there's nobody else, we will call the vote on Clause 3. As amended, all those in favor? Opposed? And that carries by a vote of 10 to 3. Councillor Tozo, Osanic, and Shaves opposed. Okay, uh, moving on to Clause 4, Municipal Fee Assistance Program Review. Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Just one quick question to staff. I noticed in the application process um, for the MFAP, um, it indicated that it looks like it's 100% online to be completed. Is there still a component that if individuals do not have access to a computer or a tablet of some kind that they can actually sit down with a staff member to complete this application form? I'm worried about accessibility issues for certain demographics. Mr. Autograph. Thank you, and through you, absolutely, we uh, we will uh, take that into. We have that uh, option still available, and we'll continue to make sure that those um, options are available for obviously various populations and accessibility. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Deputy Mayor Stephen. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Through you, um, I just need to comment and say yay because the affordable transit pass is continuing. So thank you for finding a way to make that happen. And I hope that council supports this, I expect you will. Um, I think this is going to make a really positive difference in a lot of people's lives. Um, a question for staff. So to, this report really, I think, highlights how underutilized this program is. So I know that part of the recommendation is that you're going to uh, sort of take part in a communication and marketing campaign. And I was just wondering what that might look like. I don't know if you've talked about it. And I'm also wondering about outreach. So I read in the report in 2019, there was talk of um, going to Rideau Heights Community Center two days a week in 362 Montreal Street. And so I'm just wondering, like, how much outreach are we doing to get the people who need or who qualify for this to become aware and actually utilize it? Thank you. Ms. Dordograph. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Patterson, um, definitely a really important point. And, and obviously, as staff, we've pointed that out as a really important uh, next step. Um, so obviously, we will utilize or we'll make sure that this program continues to be well known um, by all of all of the partners that work with clients. But we also really want to kind of make this a bit broader to get into more of the mainstream communication. So obviously we will be looking at social media. I'm sure council will help as well with spreading the word. Um, you know, we can think of um, um, like tax, tax bills, doctor's offices, childcare centers, uh, really kind of the places where people that may not necessarily uh, realize that they're eligible will, will see this information and realize that they can utilize this. So we, we have not uh, we, we obviously will be working on this communication um, uh, approach in the next few months to really um, broaden the, the understanding standing and knowledge of this program. Uh, hopefully, if, if Council approves, we will also have some, some new items to offer, and we are quite hopeful that um, this uptake will increase and will obviously also continue to measure um, uptake and, and change our messaging accordingly if, need, if needed. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Um, I am so proud of this policy as a city. I think that this is something really exceptional that Kingston offers. So I, yeah, I fully support this. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, next on my list is Councillor Sinek. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to follow on with what um, <laughs> Councillor Stephen just said, um, I also want to thank staff for the um, spay and neuter clinic and working with the Humane Society to hopefully open up um, one to two days per month of just doing spay and neuters for MFAP clients. That sounds really exciting. Um, rather than just relying on the vouchers, but to do this additional uh, spay and neutering. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ridge. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, yeah, uh, so I just want to echo uh, much of what uh, Deputy Mayor Stephen, De Deputy Mayor Stephen said about this program. This is a fantastic program, and I feel that there's lots of opportunity to uh, increase uh, the, the user base. And uh, I also think it's really important to note that the pivot in terms of moving towards more food security options is a really important policy piece that we'll have a bit more discussion later this evening as well, but it's something that we really need to keep in mind in the future, uh, especially as times get harder and harder for people. So thank you very much, and we'll be supporting this. Thank you. Councillor Toso. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you, I'll be brief. Uh, I also want to echo that, but I'm, on a different note, how sad it is that we're getting in the business of delivering food? Like, that's where we are. This is really something that should be done at a national level or a provincial level. And here we are as a municipality with our resources getting into the business of feeding people. Um, yeah, I, I'm proud to support this. I also mourn the fact that food inflation and food costs are high. And now we're, as with a motion coming forward again later on, I'll do this again later. It's too bad we have to do this. So I has my full support. But let's take a moment and just say, it should not be political having enough food to eat. Okay, and uh, Councillor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, I'm just gonna follow up Councillor Tozo's comments with a conversation that him and I were just having earlier before this meeting, and, and it was the fact that we are not gonna solve this at the municipal level. So let that be a clarion call to all other levels of government that it's, we're not trying to make your job easier here. This is your responsibility. Stop downloading it on municipalities. We will quickly run out of money trying to solve this. Um, quick thing I heard on the radio today, uh, driving to work, was that food banks are struggling. They're struggling immensely. And, and it's, it's inflation driven. So you used to be able to get a bag of potatoes for $3. It's now 6 so we can throw 180,000 at this, we can throw 250,000 at it. That money does not go as far as it used to. So let's not, let's just call this what it is. This is a national problem. This is something that we will not solve as a municipality and the other levels of government need to wake up because we will quickly run out of money trying to solve this. And now all of a sudden, one of the things I said to Councillor Tozo, I'm gonna to change directions quickly, is it's a joke that we're called pothole politicians. And, and we're no longer that, let's be honest. We're dealing with mental health crisis. We're dealing with drug addiction. We're dealing with you know funding healthcare facilities. We're dealing with food insecurities. We're essentially operating at the municipal level as a city state for all intents and purposes without the funding to actually be able to do that. So. We need every municipality in Ontario, through AMO, through FCM, through all the different delegates and parties to basically take this up at the federal and provincial level. I know there's a motion coming later on in tonight's agenda, which speaks to our inability to finance these things. We cannot continue at our level to try to patchwork, band-aid, solve these problems. I've seen it in all my years on council where it starts with it's a, it's a dam that's about to break in so many different levels. And we're like, well, we're all good people. We're a good city. We want to take care of our citizens. So we take a finger and we stick it in this hole. And then we look over here and we stick it in that hole. And then all of a sudden, you've got this whole dam that's about to burst. And, and we're, we're running out of you know patches to be able to put on these problems. So I'm going to support these things tonight, but it needs to constantly be said and reiterated that we are not going to solve these problems. And if we try at this level, the other levels of government will be more than happy to let us spend all our resources on this while continuing to download more and more responsibilities. So we have to be very careful how we approach this. And at some point, 
And maybe we're not there yet, but at some point we've just got to say, okay, full stop. Do your jobs at the higher level because we cannot do them for you without the resources at our level. Thank you. Okay, anybody else on clause four? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, on to report number uh, 26 from the Administrative Policies Committee. Moved by Councillor Ridge, seconded by Councillor Glenn, that report number 26 from the Administrative Policies Committee be received and adopted. Okay, there are three clauses. Would anyone like any of the clauses separated? If not, we will vote on them as a whole. So clause one, 2024 tax ratios. Number two, administrative monetary penalties, business licensing. And clause three, surety bond policy. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, on to report number 27 from the Environment, Infrastructure, and Transportation Policies Committee. Moved by Councillor Chinani, seconded by Councillor Stephen, that report number 27 from the Environment, Infrastructure, and Transportation Policies Committee be received and adopted. Okay, there's just the one clause, street patio program update. Councillor Rich. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, so when this, uh, this program was originally uh, floating around in the administrative ether. Um, there, there were some concerns that were brought up uh, to me from business owners about uh, confusion with outreach. Can staff please detail what outreach has been done since that period of time? Thank you. Okay. I see uh, Mr. Semple and Mr. Cousin. Mr. Semple, go ahead. Uh Thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, actually, I, I was just going to introduce Mr. Cussing, who can speak to the technical aspects of this report, so please go ahead, Mr. Cussing. Uh, thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so the, uh, the city um, and city staff uh, did have quite an extensive um, out, outreach with uh, businesses, both through the process of developing the standards but also following uh, the adoption of the standard. So um, city staff uh, did, and the city did engage um, the business community through, uh, through survey and through door-to-door um, through -door visits uh, in the development of the standards. Following adoption in uh, March of 2023, when the city uh, went to reach out to, uh, to sidewalk uh, patio operators, there were a number of, of conversations, um, education sessions, and, and site visit meetings that happened um, throughout 2023, all of which informed uh, the amendments that were integrated into the standards uh, that are before you tonight. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, with regards to uh, that outreach, which it sounds like was considerably more successful. So thank you very much for all the hard work, uh, Mr. Cousin. I know that you've put into that. Um, can I just have a bit more detail about the umbrella policy, please? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, certainly. So uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of umbrellas, there were some uh, amendments that were made and proposed in the standards um, that are before you tonight, um, mostly to simplify the requirements. So essentially what's left in the standards um, relates to accessibility considerations um, and relate, relate to the height of umbrella and, and just meeting AODA requirements. Um, and, and also to ensure that umbrellas are kept within um, the confines of, of the patio itself as to not impact um, the, the sidewalk or encumber pedestrians that are walking along the sidewalk. There are a number of, of design elements um, that were in the standards previously that were adopted in March of 2023 that were removed um, in this version of the standards that are before you. Thank you very much. Okay, we will call the vote on clause one. All those in favor? Opposed, and that's carried. Okay, we have nothing from Committee of the Whole. Informational reports, if you have any questions, just raise your hand as I read through them. So number one um, is... Okay, so number one, December 2023, tender and contract award subject to delegation of authority. Councillor Stephen. 
Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Through you, that's Deputy Mayor to you, please. Thank you. <laughs> my, my apologies, Deputy Mayor. <laughs> the power. It's a, it's a temporary thing. I got to write it out. All right. Uh, so in this uh, report, there was an emergency procurement. Uh, so there's something about facilities management and construction services, and there was abatement and remediation at uh, fire station number 10 on Days Road in Lakeside District. So my question is, in, in this report, it says the work is anticipated to be completed in February 2024. So what I'm wondering is, does that mean that the firefighters will finally be out of that trailer and back in the dorms at station 10? Is that what we can expect in February 2024? Thank you. We're, we're just waiting to see who might show up on the screen. Oh, uh, Commissioner Carboni has raised his hand. Commissioner Carboni, go ahead. Uh, thank you to your worship. Um, the the work is scheduled to be completed shortly. I think the relocation of the firefighters back from the um, construction trailers to the dorm would also be subject to some operational discussions with uh, the fire department, but the work is anticipated to be completed in uh, the next month. Okay, through you, Mayor Passer. Thank you. So what I'm hearing, just to verify, is that the construction piece should be completed. There may be other hoops to jump through, but hopefully within the next few months, the firefighters will be back in their dorms, we think. Uh, through your worship, the the abatement work should be completed and the building would be um, able to have the firefighters return um, once that construction work is completed, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, if there are no other questions, uh, we'll continue on. Uh, report number two, quarterly report, Tourism Kingston, Q4 2023. Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. Just a couple of quick questions for Tourism Kingston. Um, I noticed in the report 100 tickets were sold for the, ho for the Vanier Cup Hotel combo. Did it sell out? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and thanks for the question, uh, Councillor Amos. Uh, in terms of sellout through uh, Queen's University, the event was full, but not necessarily sold to maximum capacity. But the good news story on that, in terms of um, general ticket sales, is that we're able to host it again in 2024, as you know. So certainly have more time, lead up time, essentially, not just to do packaging, but also to work with Queen's on uh, filling their facility. Um, but yeah, definitely opportunity to be able to offset some of the, and, and working with the city, obviously, on some pre and post events around that particular event. Okay. No, it's great that we've got that event here for two years, so it's, it's good. Um, I noticed in your report that there was some focus on the solar eclipse that's happening in April, and that you've identified four sites for optimum viewing area. Um, slight concern, will Tourism Kingston have uh, proper sunglass wear available at those four sites for the public? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, great, another great question, Councillor Amos. So in terms of viewing sites, um, certainly uh, on our particular channel, so visit kingston.ca, um, as viewing sites come online, whether those that are city operated, whether they're uh, other community partner operated, certainly there's uh, an emergency management um, oversight and plan as to what uh, will be publicly accessible. And certainly we're working with transit to make sure that we're minimizing the amount of um, traffic on roadways and maximizing the amount of viewing sites. And so anticipating a large influx of visitors as well as uh, locals that want to uh, intake, uh, the uh, glasses are actually already for sale. And um, I know there's some um, opportunity uh, at 209 Ontario Street, but also uh, for, for purchase, but also Queen's University has worked with uh, Kingston Public Libraries, and those um, particular libraries also have uh, viewing glasses uh, offered for uh, free for community use. So there's sort of two areas that I know within the city where you can um, obtain glasses. And as I say, um, ensure that you're just visiting our channels because as events come online or communications around those events come online, all of that information is posted. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. If there's no other questions, we'll continue. Number three, quarterly report, Kingston Economic Development Corporation, Q4 2023. We have no information reports from members of council. Miscellaneous business. 
Uh, we have two motions. Number one, moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Amos, that the resignation of Judy Kirkpatrick from the Kingston Frontenac Housing Corporation Board of Directors be received with regret and that in accordance with Section 3.3.2D of the Public Appointment Policy, Nancy South be appointed from the reserve pool to the Kingston Frontenac Housing Corporation Board of Directors for term ending November 30th, 2024. Number two, moved by Councillor Shnani, seconded by Councillor Glenn, that as requested by Linda Clotier, Easter Seals, Ontario, Kingston City Council proclaim the month of March 2024 as Easter Seals Month in the City of Kingston. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, on to new motions. We have two new motions. For the first motion, I will turn the floor over to the Deputy Mayor. Nailed it. Thanks, Mayor Patterson. <laughs> All right, uh, new motion number one. So moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen. Whereas current provincial municipal fiscal arrangements are undermining Ontario's economic prosperity and quality of life, and whereas nearly a third of municipal spending in Ontario is for services in areas of provincial responsibility and expenditures are outpacing provincial contributions by nearly $4 billion a year, and whereas municipal revenues, such as property taxes, do not grow with the economy or inflation, and whereas unprecedented population and housing growth will require significant investments in municipal infrastructure, and whereas municipalities like Kingston are being asked to take on complex health and social challenges like homelessness and addressing the mental health and addictions crises, and whereas inflation, rising interest rates, and provincial policy decisions are constraining municipal fiscal capacity, and whereas property taxes, including people on fixed incomes and small businesses, can't afford to subsidize income redistribution programs for those most in need, and whereas the province can and should invest more in the prosperity of communities, and whereas municipalities and the provincial government have a strong history of collaboration. Therefore, be it resolved that Ontario commit to undertaking, with the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, a comprehensive social and economic prosperity review to promote the stability and sustainability of municipal finances across Ontario. And that a copy of this motion be sent to the Honourable Doug Ford, MPP, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Paul Calandra, MPP, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, the Honourable Peter Bethlen Flabby, I hope I said that right, MPP, Minister of Finance, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Ted Shu, MPP, Kingston and the Islands, and John Jordan, MPP, Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Mayor Patterson, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. So, I'd like to describe the problem, the biggest risk to cities like Kingston. The problem is we're trying to build 21st century cities using a 19th century fiscal and constitutional framework. That fundamentally is the problem. Do you know why cities only have property taxes as their revenue source? Because cities only ever used to deal with property services. It used to be that cities focused on roads, sewer pipes, parks, garbage collection, snow plowing. These are services that are geared to property. Hence, cities were given property tax as a way to be able to manage those services. As we've talked about tonight, and we talk about almost every meeting around this table, that is clearly not what's going on now. We are being pulled more and more into the human services, food security, homeless, services, housing, child care. I mean, the list goes on and on. And uh, if, you're, if you're only ever in Ontario, you may not realize this, but Ontario is the only province where cities are involved in these other services. And the issue is that the costs are going up faster than the grant dollars that we get from the province, which means we have to put more and more of our own money into this to try to sustain these services. Okay, why is this a problem? Because the more money that we're having to spend on these human services inevitably means that unless we want to avoid big increases in our property tax, we basically have to start taking money away from investment in the property services that cities need. Hence, not investing as much as we need to into new roads and pipes and parks and facilities that are required for communities to thrive because only cities can do that stuff. That's the problem. And what we're saying to the province is that we actually share their goal 
to build 1.5 million homes across the province. And obviously in Kingston, we want to be on the leading edge and contributing to that goal. But if we don't solve these underlying fiscal imbalances, we're not going to get the necessary investments to be able to support the housing that needs to be built. So quite frankly, um, the conversation that's happening across the province among municipalities is that as we approach the provincial budget this year, which is coming in just a short time, that rather than asking for you know, more grant funding to, to help address one of the many other issues that we're being drawn into to deal with, Instead, the ask is very simple. Can we simply sit down as two levels of government and figure this out? Because ultimately, it's in all of our interests. There's only one taxpayer. So ultimately, to best serve that taxpayer, can we figure this out and figure out a system that works and is financially sustainable and viable? So this motion before you is a motion that is going out to municipalities across the province AMO is asking all of us to support this so we can attach our name to it. Our hope is to get hundreds of municipalities to be able to all send in this motion at the same time and convince that the province that the best thing to do is sit down and let's have the discussion and let's figure out what will work for all of us. So for that reason, I'm asking for your support tonight so we can add Kingston to the list of many other communities that are doing this work. Thank you. Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I will not forget that you're Deputy Mayor uh, through you. Um, I fully support this. Um, I, I've had a lot of discussions about property taxes and taxations. It's also important to highlight that property taxes are a regressive form of tax, that it doesn't take into account the amount of income that one neighbor would have to another. So, and that fundamentally is a regressive form of taxation by not being able to take a look at the amount of uh, income that different families would have. Um, I did some back of the math calculation I saw in Kingston for Rottenack Housing just to speak to some of the challenges we have. Uh, with Councillor Amos, I sit on the Kingston Rottenack Housing Board. There's a 1,200 person wait list for affordable housing. A unit of affordable housing costs $350,000. If we wanted to get everybody on that wait list into housing tomorrow, it would cost $420 million to build enough affordable housing. That is the amount of our budget every year for everything the city does. We do not have the money and resources to be able to do this. We just don't have the financial capacity. And that's just housing. That's not healthcare, that's not food, that's not the other services that we are now being asked to supply as a municipality. I don't say this because I'm like looking at this and fret fretting. I, I completely agree with Mayor Patterson. We need a new fiscal framework for cities. We need to be able to either have the resources available to meet these additional needs for housing, for mental health and addiction services, or the province needs to do more. And I, I absolutely fully support this, but we de I would love to have a fight day in and day out for the appropriate level of progressive taxation to meet the needs of our local constituents in Kingston, to be that responsive level of government so they could say to those constituents who want affordable housing, I'll go and advocate for that because we have the financial resources to meet those needs. I would love that kind of argument around the horseshoe table instead of just be begging upper levels of government, please give us $20 million. We're desperate. Um, I really hope that this is fruitful. So you have my full support for this. Thank you. Councillor Hassan. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Steven. <clears throat> and uh, thank you, Mayor Patterson. Uh, I always admire your leadership and your vision. And uh, this is a great initiative. Uh, it's uh, long overdue, uh, such initiative through the different municipality or the Council of the Mayors or, or municipality. And you have summarized our work very well in a few words that what is our jurisdiction, what is our jobs, and what we are ending up to do. Um, I think a month ago uh, during the, uh, or more than a month ago during the um, budget presentations, I brought a motion for um, doctor recruitment to set aside money. Knowingly, this is not our jurisdiction, this is not our area, this is not our job, but my heart goes to, along with my fellow counselor, to our resident, to our constituents, to our fellow Kingstonian, that they are desperately in, uh, in help. And as a council, I uh, I agree with you, and I urge my fellow councillors, uh, in the future, we have to think 
when we introduce the programs. But sometime, like such in the, um, for, for the doctor recruitment, uh, the, the food in insecurity, the environment, is something, I'm a father of three children. If one of my son is suffering with some difficulties as a father, I can see it. So as a leader of the community, sometimes the, the problems go beyond and, uh, you know, it's even not in our control, but we just can't sit and see it. You know, we have to take initiatives. And I appreciate, again, your leadership and uh, our staff's hard work to accommodate those, those small things. But it is time, but we have to rethink again how we can stop those and move forward to reinvest to fight such problems. And um, I definitely 100% agree with you, and I'm 100% in, in the support of this. And I appreciate your vision and your leadership to continue. And I, I encourage you to explore more opportunity to f fight with the federal government, with the provincial government, to get more dollar, what we're spending in the name of their work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Glenn. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Stephen. Um, Thank you very much for bringing this motion. I think that there is a, a tide of momentum happening around reimagining how we provide services in this city, in the province, and across the country. Uh, just as a note of update, FCM is going to be launching a national campaign February 26th on the municipal growth framework. So again, going back to the table to say, we need to do this differently. So I think this motion is very supportive of that campaign and it can inform what's going to be happening at that national level. So I'm fully in favor of this. You know, it's long overdue that we stopped uh, trying to fund services that we were never meant to have to fund. But this starts from the top down. The federal government downloads to the province and then depending on which province you're in, you get the luck of the draws to which services get downloaded to the municipalities. In our case, they've been several and they've been very burdensome to our community. Uh, so I'm very happy to support this and to see it also coincide with what's happening federally. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Baum. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, and through you, I, I think uh, this is a good first step. I guess I just am concerned that some of these pleas sometimes fall on deaf ears. The other levels of governments do not have a great track record of listening to appeals from municipalities, whether it comes from AMO or FCM or any, or any of those. And it is more of a, you know, we're a creature of the province for all intents and service or, and for all intents and purposes there. So the services that we provide, there's been mission creep. Uh, the, the mayor mentioned it earlier. We are into, everything now so i have kind of two thoughts with this is one you got to start somewhere two every time that we deal with an issue that is really truly outside of our jurisdiction and we're trying to solve a provincial or federal problem let's please extend an official invite to the federal and provincial representatives of our area to come to that meeting to hear us debate problems that they should be dealing with. And we can do this every time. As an addition to that, let's please, when we start funding things that are not technically our responsibility to fund, let's attach a caveat to that. Kingston City Council stepping up to fund provincial, federal responsibilities to plug the gaps that are not being provided by those levels of government. Let's actually start calling out these actions and get some real change because this, this, I am fully in support of this. You have to be mature and you have to approach it this way. But let's be honest, we can do this and they can turn around and go, thanks for your feedback, but no thanks, nothing's going to change. So if we're going to be the drivers of change, then we have to start pointing out all the things that we're doing, whether it's food security, mental health and addictions, funding hospitals. I don't think the average citizen, unfortunately, at this point truly understands just all the things that we are responsible for now because the downloading, I would consider myself relatively engaged in politics from a very young age. 
like the age of seven, I started watching federal elections. Why? I don't know. I like the colors on a map. But, but, even, but even I would be hard pressed at times to truly understand all the different areas where, the, where we've creeped into over time. And it happens just little by little. It's, oh, here all of a sudden you're going to do this. And then you start doing that and then the funding dries up. But you continue to do it. Affordable housing is probably a prime example. Hey, you guys are going to take that on. No. Oh, no, you don't get to say no. We'll give you $120 million over 10 years. Well, what do we do when that dries up? Well, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it then. Well, it dried up. <laughs> the funding model stayed the same. Sometimes you get grants. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're in arrears by hundreds of millions of dollars. And then they're like, hey, here's a quick 20. Also, photo op, problem solved. Well, no, it didn't solve the problem. It was politically expedient at that time time at that date. So we can't, as the mayor said, rely on that funding model. But I also think it's, it's, it's on us to start calling out all the things that we deal with at this level that really go far beyond municipal responsibility. And, and if we don't do that, I think once we start doing that, people will begin to realize, whoa, 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 hold on. Like, why is my local councillor dealing with the affordable housing crisis but I'm not really hearing any chatter about that at the national level. I'm not hearing any solutions at the upper echelons of government, which is truly where the change has to happen. It's also concerning hearing, you know, that Ontario has, you know, all these additional responsibilities. But it sounds like if you're a councillor in, you know, BC, it's it's they're dealing with, you know, more municipal issues. So there seems to be a little bit of discrepancy there, which perhaps creates some issues when you're dealing with FCM trying to get everybody on the same page when our province seems to be set up differently and, and what we deal with. So I'm glad that we have this place to start. Um, I'm happy to write those official invites, but I still think that, you know, let's, let's invite our MPs and our MPPs that represent us whenever we deal with problems that really are, are in their court, because I think it would be great for them to hear our debates and hear from our, our you know, constituents that are truly their constituents. Seconds. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. That are truly their constituents. And I'm going to focus on one thing that the mayor said. There is only one taxpayer, but that taxpayer has multiple representatives. So let's get those other representatives in the room when we're dealing with higher level problems. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Chinani. Yeah, I fully support this. Um, I like how it's not, we're not asking that, you know, we need money for this or we need this or that. It's a let's sit together and come up with a plan that works for all the municipalities in Ontario and actually Ontario as a whole. So I will support this and I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Patterson, you can have the last word. He's good. All right, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. I return the chair back to you. Thank you very much. Okay, on to new motion number two, moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor Ridge. Where City Council has included help address food insecurity and sustainability as one of its priorities within its 2023 to 2026 strategic plan. Whereas food insecurity has become more prevalent in lower and middle class income house populations, which has triggered different program changes, including the Municipal Fee Assistance Program. Whereas food banks and pantries, including the Queen's University and St. Lawrence College food banks, have all identified a surge in demand, particularly in low to middle income uh, class uh, households over the last year and their inability to supply sufficient food and items to the community. Whereas the needs in this community and on post-secondary institutions are pressing, considering the end of the school semester in April 2024, whereas the City of Kingston can leverage revenues outside of property taxes to support various programs such as Toys for Tickets, Therefore, be resolved that staff implement a pilot project to establish a fines for food month, which would redirect parking revenues estimated at $180,000 equally to free food banks and free food pantries only, and that the 2024 operating budget be amended to reflect a reduction of $180,000 in the transfer to the parking reserve fund and a corresponding contribution to others. And the council directs staff to report back by the end of 2024 on the results of the pilot project and options to continue this program. Councillor Glenn, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Uh, I almost feel like I don't need to speak very much to this after the conversation that's gone on around this table this evening. So perhaps what I'm going to talk about is uh, how this came to be. In December, when I was uh, meeting with the AMS, they mentioned that they were struggling with their food bank and that there were students who didn't have enough food to eat. And at the time, we were also having conversations with bylaw and that's when you know, Toys for Tickets got brought up. 
And so that's when we started discussing, well, perhaps we could do fines for food. And then, as most of you are aware, we held the first meeting for the post-secondary working group. And that meeting was to set out our priorities and the things we were going to focus on. So we went in with you know, some ideas on what, what would be on that list. But one of the surprising things was that food was one of the key issues. And so it came up yet again. And after a number of trips to the food bank over the last year, hearing about the increased need in the community, hearing from not just the Queen's students who are in, mostly in my district, but also from the students at St. Lawrence that they're also facing the same issues, it became apparent that there was a crisis here. And while I admit that we have to go to the other levels of government to help improve this situation in the long term, we have an immediate need in front of us, and that's people who just don't have enough to eat. And it's our students, and it's crept up from lower incomes to middle in income um, families because of the inflationary costs, because of the increased costs of housing. Um, more and more is being put on individuals. So, in the interim, this is an opportunity for us to make sure that people have one of the basic needs met. So I'm hoping uh, that this is a very simple motion to, to approve and vote for. Um, I think we can do a lot of good in the short term and at least give our students as well as the rest of our community a couple of months to maybe catch up just a little bit. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. First on my list is uh, Councillor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. So I am going to support this. Uh, it, it is a worthy effort. Again, though, I'm going to reiterate that, you know, the radio is saying one in four now. One in four Canadians is accessing the food bank. One in four. And we're a first world country. I'm, I'm not, not so sure about that anymore, if that's the case. It's very concerning. Again, um, maybe we as a council in the future can add on to this that council also directs staff to send these motions to the MPs and MPPs that represent our ridings and the ministers responsible for those programs because this is just a perfect example that follows the previous motion of where we're filling in the gaps and we can do this to a point but as the mayor said earlier when you know when, when you start looking at these things and taking money from the parking reserve fund that's there for certain things and you start putting it over here it needs to happen but at the same time there's also a cost to that so we can only fill these you know holes in the dam so many times so this is something i'm going to support it i think it needs to happen but again this is a perfect example of we will eventually run out of money our reserve funds were severely hurt during the pandemic we cut projects, we push projects back. We're, we're no longer almost doing some of the municipal things that we need to do, like building that infrastructure, because we're trying to shore these up. So again, it's been a, you know, a good discussion, but this is one more perfect example where we can hold this up. And I hope the media grabs onto this and goes, Kingston City Municipal Council stepping up where the other levels of government failing. And Media picks that up and it can happen all across Ontario where they see where municipalities are doing the job of the higher levels. And that will wake up the, hopefully, a groundswell of people to now go to those other representatives and go, why are municipalities doing what you should be doing? And I think that's the larger conversation that we need to constantly keep reiterating. And I know I'm gonna continue on for the next two years while I'm in this chair or longer possibly, whether I'm in this chair or not, to say, different levels of government need to do their jobs and stop downloading, okay? We have enough to fill our time down here with simply potholes that we can't fix, apparently. We don't need everything downloaded without funding to go with it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, I see the whereas clauses here, but I actually want to know what I'm voting for. Uh, so staff, how do you interpret this? Is this purely meant for Queen's students and St. Lawrence College, or is this a general fund that will be spent on the overall community? I'm curious. CEO Hurdle. Thank you, and uh, through you. So, um, Councillor, very good question. It would be spent on all food banks and food pantries across the community, including those of the post-secondary institutions. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I wanna highlight that uh, every, so 
sorry, every so often I have a partners meeting at the Rideau Heights Community Center every Friday with many community partners. The Senior Center is there, the YMCA is there, um, the Boys and Girls Club are there, and the number one thing we talk about is food and the fact that the community needs food. Uh, I've had meetings at the, with the Salvation Army. I was knocking on doors a few weeks ago because that's why I do my spare time in the middle of winter because I'm a fun guy. Um, on Weller Street, and I was walking by, and a food truck was unloading food to the Salvation Army, and they were giving it out at, in the, at, on Weller Street. Uh, highlights to the Salvation Army for doing great work and really meeting the needs of the community. There is a desperate need for readily accessible, available, inexpensive food. Um, and I fully support this. Bravo, Councillor Glenn. This is a great motion. I wish we could do more. I want to echo what Councillor Bohm said, uh, who may just have announced his re-election campaign. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that we need to aggressively get other levels of government uh, in the air business of really getting people fed. It's tragic to see the kind of stories that I have every Every Christmas season, uh, I participate in the Work Hardy Well program. I know Mayor Patterson has been there as well. I went this year. I'd like to invite all of counselor to, all of my fellow counselors to go. Um, we give food to the community at the Rideau Heights Community Center. And it's little kids, it's family, it's the entire community. It is the most heartwarming thing that will ever fill your cup that you will ever see. And I remember last year, um, a little kid came up and asked if he could take some home uh, because he didn't think his brother had eaten that day. Uh, that's the challenges that we're having in our community. Uh, and it's unfortunate in a country like Canada, people go to bed hungry. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ridge. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, through you. Um, so I, I think all these comments have been really great. Um, and thank you, uh, Councillor Glenn, for for bringing this forward. A couple, a couple of things I wanted to touch on that haven't been mentioned yet. So um, I, I was actually at uh, St. Vincent de Paul today and I've spoken to, to uh, organizers at other food banks. And, and we talk about inflationary pressures on people. Those inflationary pressures also exist on the donors for those food banks as well. And so what we're seeing is an effect where food banks have been running at deficit levels for at least one or two years. Um, and so I think that these funds are really sorely needed to help get that financial foothold for them to get back to where they can operate at capacity. I think that, um, yeah, just, just to echo that I think food security, <laughs> I mean, the food security when, when I grew up was definitely uh, at the front of my mind, but um, we're seeing more and more people access these services. Um, uh, one organization had over 350% uh, increase in independent users from 2019 to 2021. Um, and there's, it, this is going to continue. And, and there's also on top of this, there's the stigma piece for people accessing this. We need to send a message that it's okay to, to access these services if you need to do them, if you need to feed yourself or your family, um, which can be very difficult to overcome. And so I'm glad that we're having this conversation here. Hopefully that can help normalize it a little bit. Um, so yeah, fully in support of this. Um, yeah, nobody, nobody should be going hungry. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, through you. This past summer, I had the opportunity to have conversations with St. Lawrence College Student Services and their administration. And in my conversations with them, uh, it was pointed out to me that a number of the, the students at St. Lawrence College are going through food security issues and that their food bank cannot keep up. Uh, so, uh, it's being felt all across the region. And I know um, Councillor Glenn is seeing it with Queens. I'm seeing it with St. Lawrence uh, in my district. And it, it's, it's unfortunate. A lot, of our, a lot of our St. Lawrence College students are local kids. Um, they're not, for whatever reason, not choosing to do uh, a university degree. Uh, they see the value of a, of a college diploma, which I think is awesome. A lot of it stipulates 
to what a family can afford. And if a, if a child or a student is struggling, like elementary school, like high school, if you're struggling in college trying to have a meal, you can't focus on your studies. So, Councillor Glenn, well done. This is an excellent motion. The other aspect is uh, we're, we're, we're seeing an alarming trend in my conversations with the executive director of the Partners in Mission Food Bank. Uh, one of the highest rates of increase of utilization of, of uh, that facility is seniors, a vulnerable population that is seeing inflationary pressures um, that are not able to meet those demands and it is now being supplemented by the food bank. So we, we, all sectors, children, students, everyone in between up to seniors are being affected by this. It's a shame. I'll, I'll leave it there. Councillor Glenn, you have my full support on this. Thanks. Okay, is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councillor Glenn, you have the last word. Is there anything else you want to add? The only thing I'd like to add is my thanks. Um, and I know that uh, I, I you know, never like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but I think that this is going to go through no problem. So I'm going to, in advance, thank everyone, everyone around this table on behalf of uh, the students, the seniors, the single parents, the people on ODSB, Ontario Works, anyone who is just struggling to get by day to day, who's going to be accessing food banks, um, because this is what we're here for, is to work on behalf of the community. Um, you know, part of our strategic plan is to long-term address food insecurity and sustainability. Part of that hopefully will be to get the other levels of government to contribute the way they should so that we don't have to have this in our strategic plan on a regular basis, but we've had to incorporate it there because we're the level of government that recognizes the needs of our constituents and is here and poised to actually do something about them. And that's what I see this motion being. Um, so thank you. I, I think we'll see a lot of uh, students passing those courses with a little bit of food in their bellies. Okay, thank you. So we'll call the vote on new motion number two. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, and that's carried. Okay, we have no other new motions. Are there any notices of motion? Not, uh, Madam Clerk, Ross, for minutes, please. Moved by Councillor Osterhoff, seconded by Councillor Osanek, that the minutes of City Council meeting number 6 2024, held Tuesday, February 6th, 2024, be confirmed. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, we have some tabling of documents, a number of communications. Is there any other business? Okay, so at this point, uh, we will rise from open session and reconvene into committee of the whole closed meeting. Do we need a motion for that, Madam Clerk? Or? Okay, so why don't we take a, a 10 minute break and we will restart upstairs at uh, 8.53.
Okay. Oh. Okay, folks, uh, so with that, um, do we need a motion to rise? Yes, so if we get a motion to rise from committee the whole closed meeting without reporting, please. Okay, uh, moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Ridge, that council rise from committee the whole closed meeting without reporting. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, cross your bylaws, please. Moved by Councillor Ridge, seconded by Councillor Hassan, that bylaws 1 through 8, 10, and 11 be given their first and second reading. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Moved by Councillor Ridge, seconded by Councillor Hassan, that bylaws 5 and 9 through 11 be given their third reading. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Bohm. All those in favor? Opposed? And we're adjourned. Thanks very much.